Did we lose people? No. Who are the two other people that were on? They, they were me. Oh, they were you. Do you have four windows open? So am I just doing this like intro just like a regular YouTube? What? You can talk. Oh, it's live? Oh, okay. You can tell me that. get started. Oh, cool. <laughs> All right. So I am going to be doing just some easy sketching today. I have just some crud pimper, printer paper and um, some of my thumbnails. Um, so it's going to be a nice, easy, fun day. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get started because nobody's here. <laughs> If you are here, pop into the chat and I'll know you're here. Otherwise, I'm just gonna work.
Could you cut to the other camera, Ellie? Okay, cool. I did. This Sweet. Is my second oh, got it. <laughs> Do you want me to turn this off? Oops. Do you have your stream of sound on? My computer's on. The, your video you're watching right now. Oops. <laughs> okay, it's muted now. Oh my gosh. Hi, Anne. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Thanks for coming, Anne. I appreciate you. It's our very first one, so if you're in the chat, welcome. Feel free to ask any questions. Um, I'm just doodling away here. I have a sketch of um, some of my favorite holiday memories. Um, so if you guys are at home and you want to sketch along, um, you can just think of mine are always centered around food. <laughs> so um, I'm just doing one right now where we're in a coffee shop and there's like all the beautiful bunt cakes and cupcakes and things happening um, behind the case. And there's just like a line out the door of people buying goodies. Uh, my mom used to run a baking business. Um, she was Donna by the pie lady. And she made pies all the time. Um, through Basically through Thanksgiving to Christmas, she was baking pies like 20 pies a day. It was crazy. Um, so we have like three ovens in the house and had to like outfit the kitchen for everything and... She's a very talented baker. My thumbnail is pretty rough, so I'm like trying to figure it out on this like actual sized paper um, to kind of figure out like the posing and like what I want to do. Especially, truth be told, I'm a little nervous. <laughs>
Um, hi, Anne. Explain to me what you're doing. I can totally explain what I'm doing. Um, so right now I'm sketching um, the concept I had in this thumbnail. So this is called a thumbnail when you have like all these tiny little sketches on. I guess I'm talking to this camera. Whoops. <laughs> um, so these little guys are called thumbnails. So they're really tiny, not quite the size of a thumbnail, but they're small enough where you really can't tell what's going on unless you drew them. Um, so I'm, my, basically my concept is this one where there's like these two kids looking through a pastry case in um, a coffee shop and or a bakery or whatever. And um, so basically I'm transferring this idea onto this full size piece of paper, um, which is basically for ink. <laughs> so um, I can ink this when I'm done with it. Um, but the transition is like kind of funky. So, um, cause it's, I, I'm not tracing it with like a tracing, um, tracing paper or a light box. So, um, that's why I'm kind of noodling around in here because I'm kind of trying to see where everything's going to fit and like the size and perspective. Um, so that's kind of why I'm like not talking too much and like figuring this out. Um, but once this is down is like the fun part, like this is kind of the not so fun part. Um, because it's just like a lot of like, is this going to go here? Is this not going to go here? Like, you don't really get to be in the fun detail yet. So, um, it's hard to see right now, but in like 10 minutes, this is going to start to look like a picture. <laughs>
trying to figure out what this woman would be buying. <laughs> what kind of like pastry she wants to go with her cup of coffee here. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know. Also, I have to fill this entire pastry case with pastries and goodies and stuff. So if you guys have stuff you want to see drawn, um, I know that I saw this like incredible looking bunt pan that made the cake look like mountains and then you just like put powdered sugar on it. I'm totally going to draw that. It was on Food 52. It was beautiful. But um, if you have your favorite Christmas treat or coffee shop treat, let me know. Um, put it in the chat and I'll, I'll draw it in here. I wanted this to be a really detailed piece because I just started traditionally inking again um, and I've been using this amazing brush that I've literally been wanting my entire life. <laughs> um, the Winsor Newton Series 7 brushes are expensive and I just had the size one so it's not too bad but they're just like kind of like those legendary brushes um, that like all artists are like, oh man, if you're pro, you gotta have this. And like, I just bought this for myself like maybe two years ago, <laughs> but I haven't gotten to use it much because I've been doing a lot of my work digitally because of publishing. So um, I finally bought it and it's like bread and butter. It's like all of the um, Calvin and Hobbes comics were inked with the Series 7 Winsor Newton brush. And um, it's all natural sable hair. It's like the Cadillac of brushes. It's really nice. <laughs> And it just feels really good. So it's like really indulgent to do these kinds of things and put a lot of detail in because I can just get lost in it forever. Oops. Um, why do I use a red pencil? Um, I use a red pencil because um, I'm going to ink over this. Um, so I can just ink right over the top. And then when I scan it into the computer, I can isolate the ink drawing um, from the black or the, yeah, the black lines from the red pencil really easily. And, um, it is also pretty forgiving. Like if I do a, um, in graphite, like a graphite sketch, it's a lot more messy and it kind of gets like, if I erase a lot, like I'm erasing a ton, um, and the graphite just gets a little bit messy and muddy. So, um, the red pencil kind of helps me keep things more clean. And especially on days where I'm not super decisive, like right now, uh, where I just keep erasing things and redrawing them. Um, it's nice to use the red pencil because I have no idea where I'm putting things. <laughs> it's a little less permanent than sometimes graphite can be.
I'm trying to figure out like what these kids are gonna wear. I'm kind of thinking like scarves and things, but I'm not quite sure about their character design yet. Hi, Lindsay. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please put them in the chat. Um, I'm doing my best to draw and answer questions at the same time. It's much harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, but I also have some questions that people wrote in on Instagram that I'm going to answer in a little bit. So once I get over this like initial, like, what am I doing process, um, and I start actually drawing and inking all. I'll be more apt to answer questions, but go ahead and throw them in there. Um, and I'll do my best to answer them.
pink suit. <laughs> Sometimes if I'm drawing, I'll, I'll know what expression I want to be drawing, but I'll have done it too tightly because I was trying to figure out what I was doing. So I'll just erase the whole thing and try to draw it over again, but more loosely, <laughs> if that makes any sense. I want to make his hat like kids have some really fun Christmas hats like is there like a dinosaur hat or something people always have like really fun hats at Christmas time and just like in winter in general it's pretty um, gloomy here in New England so I feel like you gotta spice things up a little bit with a fun hat all right this one's got little like fins on it okay we're doing that one Got little ear flaps on it. And then it's got like these pointy things. <laughs> That's a fun one.
Um, hey Alex, I'm gonna sharpen my pencil. <laughs> Can we figure that out? <laughs> I don't wanna blow your brains out with my pencil sharpener noise. Am I good? Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. Oh, hi, Marlena. My question is, what surprised you most about the publishing process? Uh, what's the most challenging part slash most rewarding part? It's so amazing to see so many things published by you. Oh, thanks, Marlena. Thanks for tuning in. Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> I went into publishing, like, totally blind because I didn't know many illustrators in the industry. Um, so I was surprised by a lot of it. Um, I think I was surprised at, like, with the bigger publishers, like, how awesome they were. <laughs> um, because just the people I worked with with the bigger publishers. Sometimes a little, it's like, smaller publishers were a little bit more tricky. Um, just because they didn't have as many resources or whatever. Um, and then I think that what surprised me the most. It's hard to think about now because I feel like I have, like, hindsight's twenty twenty, where I'm, like kind of like moving away from things like that now and I've had uh, like more than like 10 books under my belt now so I'm just like oh yeah like it's hard it's hard to figure out like where was I when I first started again I have to look up like a journal entry or something but um yeah I think I think probably this is most surprising is how much work goes into actually making a book um, because I get so many inquiries where it's like, Hey, Alexandra, I love your work. Um, could you illustrate my book for me? Which is very sweet and I would love to, <laughs> but, um, it's just so many people are involved with making a book. Like there's the editor, there's the art director, there's like people in finance, there's marketers. Like there's just so many people who have hands in making this thing come to life and also like market it to people so that it sells and we you know, have a good run. But, um, yeah, that's why I feel so bad telling people I can't illustrate their books for them because I, I would love to, but, um, I can't do all of that myself. <laughs> and that's definitely kind of what it would come down to if I were to illustrate someone's book for them is like, you know, who's doing the marketing, who's doing the editing, who's doing the design layout. Like there's so much that goes into it. That's just not my job. And like, if I did all of those things, like, First of all, it would not get done for, like, five years. <laughs> and then also, um, it would just be, like, I don't think any one person could pay somebody enough to do it. Just because it, that's, like, at least 15 people's salaries. <laughs> so, um, I think that was the most surprising part. Uh, most rewarding part, I have to be um, definitely... I'm going to put this gingerbread house way back because I want to show more cookies. <laughs> Um, it would have to be, uh, people reading the books, actually. Like, I was so wrapped up in my own ego when I started. Um, I was really nervous about doing a good job. And one of my first books was with Simon & Schuster. And I totally didn't feel worthy of working for them. <laughs> um, so they basically, like, I had no idea, like, what they were expecting of me and all I knew was to just like totally kill myself to give them my best work and um I've learned this lesson before but it, it's always a hard lesson to come back to it's like you have to do your best with what you have and as much as I wanted it to be this like you know incredible number one like I'll never be a Caldecott winner but like you know you always hope your illustrations are beautiful but um a lot of illustrators are really hard on themselves, like myself, and I talked to a lot of illustrators that have, like, imposter syndrome and everything, so I was so, like, oh, man, this is, this is a horrible book, <laughs> like, my illustrations are trash and I'm garbage and just, like, incredibly unnecessarily self-deprecating, and um, when I ended up, my, the, when the book came out, it was only one in the photo, um, it was such a positive outpouring of just people loving the book and finding inspiration from Frances Perkins' story. And I think that's when I realized, like, it's not about being a perfect artist. It's about telling the story that needs to be told. And that's really what art comes down to. It's like, what 
like how are you organizing the variables um, at your disposal, like color, line, um, whatever, to convey emotion and to tell a story. And um, I didn't really get that until my first book came out when I was like, oh, it's not about how good I am. It's about how the story gets told. And if I do that in just like a successful way. <laughs> so um, that was probably the most rewarding um, part is just like kids sending me or, you know, parents sending me pictures of their kids reading the book. And um, my favorites are the parents pictures of like their kids pointing to stuff in the background because I don't always get a ton of time, but I love putting things in the background um, because kids always notice, like whether it's a dog or a cat or like somebody doing something silly in the background or just those little details. I like live for that, <laughs> which is why I'm doing this illustration right now, because it's very detailed and I love detail. But um, it it's nice because, you know, you have these parents who are having these conversations with their kids. Um because of the book that you illustrated and you're able to kind of speak that language um, through pictures and, you know, help them have that conversation. Um, so it's really nice to be a part of people's, people's just learning and, um, you know, kids trying to understand the world through art and through pictures and stories and stuff. So yeah, that's, that's gotta be their most rewarding part. It's very humbling to feel, cause I work all by myself, like with Alex in the studio, like for as long as I was working and, um, you know, I, I was really just caught up in my own stuff and hadn't really thought about what the books were going to do once they left my computer and left my hands. Um, and they went on to inspire a lot of people. So that's definitely really rewarding. <laughs> it's very, very sweet and humbling. Um, does anyone have any goodies they want me to draw? I'm like trying to fill this case with pastries. I need my mom to help me. Oh, I wanted to do these cupcakes with like, they look like Christmas trees. <laughs> I want to put them on a pedestal though. I feel like I already have that cake on a pedestal. Maybe I'll put them back here. No, I'm going to put them right here. I'm going to put them front and center and I'm going to put some gingerbread guys maybe. I don't know. Thank you for your question, Marlene. I appreciate you. <laughs> Hi, Lindsay. <laughs> is the process more often you approaching authors or authors approaching you, or is it more third parties connecting you? I have no idea how anything works. Neither do I. <laughs> um, when I first... Uh, started, I was recruited by an agency. Um, I am no longer with said agency, um, but how it would work was basically um, they would get me work. So basically they would advertise me, shop my work around, take my portfolios to publishers, and um, just kind of match projects with artists and it kind of works both ways. The author is typically not involved at all at this point. Um, so basically an author will write a book and it will go, um, they'll go to probably a liter liter literary agent and, um, the agent will kind of help them find a publisher that will pick it up and buy the rights to it. And, um, then from there, they will, the, it's totally out of the publisher's hand. The literary agent isn't really, or I'm um, sorry, out of the author's hand. Um, so the publisher is finding the illustrator at that point. So the author doesn't really have any um, say in what the illustrator's doing. Um, so I just did a um, virtual launch for Dinosaur Named Ruth, and I got to meet um, Julia Leon for the first time on that call. Um, it was for a bookstore in um, Utah. And um, it was really cool because usually, you know, I don't get to talk to the author at all um, until after the book is finished and we do something like this um, and just be like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for your work. And oh my gosh, thank you for including me and in writing, or writing the story and whatever. I'm glad we got to make this together and whatever. But um, yeah, through the whole process, it's they're not involved at all. And I think that's on purpose um, because... <laughs> I, in the beginning of my career, my very, very first book, um, uh, I don't know if I want to mention the name, but, um, it was through a really small publisher and it was like 
kind of like a self-publisher sort of thing. So people can like get their things published, but it's, I don't even know what to call it. It's kind of like a self-publishing publishing agency. So it's really, you don't have any of the help of like what a big, um, oh, thank you. Whoopie pies. Excellent. <laughs> um, you don't have any of the like resources, like a bigger publisher would have in terms of like marketing and, um, like some of the manpower. So I had to work directly with the author of this book. Um, and it was a total nightmare because, you know, if you're an author, you're, you're really invested in what you've done and, um, it's really special and kind of your baby. And, um, this author was particularly, um, had particularly intense opinions about what they wanted. And then we, we breached contract. We went over contract deadline by like, at this point, like two years, like we, I had just finished doing some signing, um, of artwork for them for a Kickstarter. Cause they, they funded it off of Kickstarter, which is fine. Um, a lot of people do it that way, but it was just like a total mess because my schedule was moving on and things were very jumbled and whatever. Um, but this person who was the author had a lot of, um, opinions and it was making the designer in my life very difficult. Um, and it's hard because, you know, you're paid for a certain amount of stuff. And at that time I didn't realize I needed to put like number of revisions in my contract. Um, so it was, it was a mess because we had ended up going over so much time and I ended up being really underpaid for the project and, um, yeah, it was just a mess. So I think that's why you usually don't have the author and illustrator kind of communicating. Um, and it's just through the publisher, um, which I like because it kind of protects me, um, from having to do like a million revisions. And, um, basically I get the manuscript and I just get to have a hundred percent creative freedom. Um, so if, if I were working with the author, I think they would have a lot of their own vision. Um, so it kind of allows me to be free and do my job and all that. So, um, it's, it's a better arrangement, <laughs> but yeah. So unless you're self-publishing, uh, the illustrator and the author never talk until it's done. I hope I answered all those questions. Sorry. I kind of rambled there for a second. Um, oh, and I guess, yeah, I'm not with the agency anymore just because, um, logistic, logistical reasons, um, pay reasons. Uh, I just always kind of wanted to be on my own. It was a great jumping off point. It got me started. It got my name out there. Um, and I have a good enough relationship with the publishers now that like we can work together and I don't need the middleman anymore. Um, and also just wanted to do stuff like this. Um, you know, Alex and I have been kind of dreaming of doing a YouTube channel that was creativity, creativity focused for a long time. Um, and just kind of like creating an environment where people can do art together. And I just had other dreams. <laughs> I didn't really need my agency anymore. Um, and also writing my own books and graphic novels. Um, I, I wanted to have full control over what I was doing. Um, and also full rights, um, and also all of, I didn't really need someone taking a big cut from, you know, if I was going to be just connecting myself with the publishers. So, um, so yeah, I, I cut that deal off at the end of the summer and I've been on my own ever since and it's been fun. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so much gold from what you shared. Thank you. Oh, I think I can put some gummy bears in there. Yeah. Um, that seems so hard to draw gingerbread man. Ooh, yeah, totally gingerbread people. I have this tiny gingerbread house. I really wanted to do a gingerbread mansion. Um, but we would have been here forever because me drawing architecture is like, I would be here forever. Um, but yeah, let's see if we can put some ginger, gingerbread and gummy bears. I, if this were an ice cream shop, I love gummy bears on my ice cream. <laughs> That's like definitely one of my favorite things. Or gummy worms, like the um, worms and dirt. <laughs> Those are my favorite. Oh, where am I going to put the whoopie pies? Oh, you know what? I'll probably put those either. I'm going to make a big stack of those, I think, over here.
probably put some more cookies. My mom, when she was um, doing her baking business, she always had these like incredible tiered like displays <laughs> and it just made everything look so indulgent. <laughs> Except now I don't have room for gummy or the gingerbread people. Move this over a little bit. Like, you know, I'm just such a fan because I, I don't know, I grew up Italian and Lebanese, but like our Thanksgiving this year, we only had five people. We had like so much, like we just finished our leftovers at, like three days ago. Um, but just like the Harry Potter feast where it's just like the whole table is covered <laughs> with food is, you know, I feel, I know that's like gluttonous or whatever, but it's just, it makes you feel so like taken care of. <laughs> So all, all the people who know me, who I've cooked for, know that, like, as as much as I know that that's probably overkill, like, it's just nice to have that, especially if you're celebrating something. Like, when we're home alone, we're just doing, like, you know, oatmeal and eggs. But when we party, there's food. <laughs> no shortage of food, which we are very grateful for. Very fortunate to be able to have that opportunity. All right, these look a little bit like hamburgers, but those are the whoopie pies. <laughs> I want to put some other stuff on this tier. And then possibly... I can extend this out a little bit to put a little something else in there. Oh, cannolis. Thanks, Nate, over text. <laughs> Man, um, I'm going to put some cannolis over here, I think behind this bundt cake. Put them on a skinny, skinny tray because they just fit them. There's cannolis. I'm trying to figure out where I can put gummy bears. The, the kid in me is just like throw them on the gingerbread house because <laughs> like you just have to raid your um, pantry and just throw whatever kind of confection you can on your gingerbread house to make it fun. I'm just going to do that. I'm going to line the top with the ginger, or the, I keep calling them ginger bears, gummy bears. Cause why not? Paul Hollywood's not here. He won't, he won't judge me. <laughs> Alrighty. You know what? I'm gonna do. Hmm. I'm gonna do a couple more cupcakes. Oh, donuts! 
Ah, oh, that's that's a really good one. I'm gonna put them on here. This little tray right here. Actually, you know what? I can put those behind this girl over here because she's the cashier. That was a good one, Lindsay. Thank you. Man, donuts are great. <laughs> oh, um, oh, chocolate chip. Oh, pasties. Thanks, mom. <laughs> How could I forget? I'm gonna put them over here on your little thing. Actually, how are those usually displayed? Oh, well, they're usually on those racks over here, but that's okay. All right, you know what? To fit all of these goodies, I'm gonna put, oh, you know what? Never mind. I'm gonna put them up here because we still have the top of our pastry case here. Uh, how long uh, is your illustration to publishing time? <laughs> That's actually why I um, kind of stepped away from that, uh, from my agency and kind of publishing other people's stories for a while because the publishing deadlines kept getting shorter and I wasn't getting paid anymore. And um, I was really stressed out because, you know, I was so jealous of NCY. I used to just like sit on his family's farm and just draw you know maybe paint like four paintings a year and illustrators nowadays everyone wants things yesterday so it just got to the point where it was like um i well the fauci book was the fastest turnaround i've ever had and that was a 44 page book um in about three months exactly and the team was really supportive of everything and they're like hey we know this is crazy like but we're gonna work with you and do what we can. And we actually made it um, on deadline. We didn't have to do any extensions. Um, and it was actually the same art director I'd worked with um, for Only Women in the Photo. And um, some of the other people at Simon & Schuster were just like incredible with it. So we kind of all like suffered together. <laughs> like I knew what I was getting into when I got into um, the project, but I just finished like last week a project that was 88 pages. And they originally wanted me to do it in two months. <laughs> so um, it was my mistake. I didn't look, I didn't ask to look at the brief before um, I said yes to it. Um, I thought I could get away with like, oh, just doing some spots and like doing like small um, illustrations or just like full page illustrations with like not a lot of detail. Um, I'm like, I can, I can make this work, but it ended up being kind of like more of an educational thing. So it was really heavily illustrated and very um, designed on their end. Um, and we finished it. I We had to extend it a little bit, but um, which is usually typically fine. But for some reason, this one was like on a strict deadline. Um, so usually like publishers build in like a few months where it's like, oh, we need more time on this and it's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, but this particular one was just, they're not really a publishing company. So um, I'm, I, they're, practices were a little bit different but um yeah it was <laughs> really stressful so um we did it in about three and a half months um and that's why I stopped because um I'm, I'm it's just the deadlines got too short and I stopped enjoying doing artwork um and that's why I'm like I want to focus more on this kind of stuff and sharing artwork with people and interacting with people and that's you know what birthed the YouTube channel but um yeah, it just, it got to be too, too tight of a turnaround for me to enjoy what I was actually doing. Um, and it actually made the quality of my work suffer. Um, cause I'm here for like, you know, you got to do what you got to do to get things out and to get paid. But there's a certain point where, you know, I just can't, I can't put my name on stuff that I'm not proud of. And, um, I've made a lot of compromises, but it, it was just not work that I believed in. Um, the stories were great and I'm glad they're out there, but, um, the quality of work I was putting out was just not great and just my health was suffering. <laughs> so I needed to stop. 
Um, so yeah, now I'm independent, which is fun, but we're doing okay. So far, so good. <laughs> All right, so I got some chocolate chip cookies. I've got some gingerbread ladies. Um, or non-binary gingerbread people. Yeah, we'll make it inclusive because that's the type of people we are. Okay, um, I need something in the middle here and I need something on the bottom here. So any more requests? Oh, pus okay, pusties are up here. For those of you who don't know what a pusty is, it's, a, it's an Italian um, pastry and it's basically like a cookie on the outside with chocolate pudding on the inside. <laughs> They're delicious. My mom makes them and they're amazing. She's actually the one that requested. So thanks mom. <laughs> um, I'm a little bit disappointed in how boring this cake is also. I wanna like make that look incredible. So I don't have my mom's cake decorating skills, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, I can't do it with a piping bag but I should at least be able to draw it. Um, hmm. Maybe I'll just do another cake. I'll make this one a multi-tiered cake. That looks like a fish scale, but that's okay. Oh, you know what I wanna do? Hmm. This is always pretty. That kind of like Indian design that like Indian weddings, like those, the garments that they wear always have like the most incredible patterns on them. I'm really inspired by this kind of like Taj Mahal pattern. I think I'm gonna do another cake. Hmm. I wanted to do like pick up here. For your coffee and stuff. There's always usually those little signs. finish my donuts. Anybody have a favorite? Oh, cinnamon rolls. Where am I gonna put those? I feel like I should have put those like right in the middle. Those are like my favorite thing, especially they're so festive. Hmm. All right, you know what? I guess I can put them in the case back here. All right, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do two cinnamon rolls, I think. I'm gonna do these over here. And then I think I'm gonna do like giant ones. Just so you can really see how fat they are. I love fat cinnamon rolls. They're so cute. <laughs> Just like covered in sauce. What do you call that? Icing. <laughs> Yeah, I love a cinnamon roll. I think I'm a pastry person. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Great British Baking Show pastries. Like, I want, like, the yeasted dough. <laughs> like, the butterier, the better. Like, I'll take a croissant any day. I think cake and croissant and pastries. Like, over cookies and pies and stuff. I think. Oh, pie! <sighs> All right, I feel like this isn't the setting. You know, okay, no, I have a solution for the pie. Pie's 
pies go in here, but it's gonna be on one of those pie things. Well, that doesn't work. Oh, they're on the outside. <laughs> like I can't have the the stand in the middle because we don't want to skewer our pies. side. That's so structurally makes sense. Put like decorative feet on this, but I don't know how I want to do that. I'm sad I can't see the tops of pies. I really like when things are cut out. You can see like the berries and stuff. But I don't know where else to put pies. pretty good about this so far. I feel like that perspective isn't right, but we'll figure that out in a second. Alright, um, does anyone have any, any other recommendations? I need something to go here, which I could always just put more gingerbread people. Oh, this spot needs to get filled. I feel like, what is it called? Petit four? Where they're just these little tiny squares of sugar. 
<laughs> but they're layered, so they're fancy. I'm gonna put those. I don't know if you can really tell what those are, but they're fancy finger snacks. Log. That would have been a good one. <laughs> this is just like one of those boxes of chocolates that they always have chocolate, like at cafes. Like local chocolate bars. This chocolate goes really well with coffee. Oh, and what is this lady ordering? I'm going to have her order a croissant because. Even with all this stuff, I would just, like, love a croissant. It's just because you can't make it at home, you know? That's a really tiny croissant. I'd be mad if I got a tiny croissant like that. <laughs> like, where's my giant croissant, please? That's a better looking, more generous looking croissant. I feel like this woman needs glasses. She looks like a professional person. Oh, I guess I could do some Christmas tree cookies. Some little cutouts. Perspective, we need perspective. There we go. All right, so we got chocolate chip, Christmas tree flavor, <laughs> and uh, gingerbread people. Little eyeballs. Okay, so, um, You know what, I'm gonna do mini bundt cakes over here. I know those wouldn't be like outside of the case, but I like the way they look, so we're doing it. Okay, that looks pretty good. I need a little bit of a background. I don't want to go too crazy just because we have so much going on up front that I don't want to make it too distracting, but I feel like I don't have to smudge too much. Hmm. 
Hmm. The little like cream station. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for joining. Oh my gosh, your uh, profile picture is really cute. Your engagement photos. Um, hmm. Piece of artwork here, maybe? I, mean, I feel like this is a door. To somewhere. A little bit of a menu peeking through here, maybe? Probably not, because that sign is there, but whatever. I'm sure there isn't a tangent here. I'll just put more artwork here. There's always art hanging in coffee shops and bakeries. It's a really good spot. I could draw people sitting at tables back there, but I don't want to get too carried away, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and start inking this. But first, um, I think I'm just going to go over places that are a little bit sketchy and just kind of refine them with a sharper pencil. So Alex, do you mind? Um, I need to sharpen my pencil again. Could you mute me? Um, alrighty. So I think places where like there's big lines, I just want to make sure that those are carrying through where I want them to because once I put the, um, the black lines down for the ink, it's, it's pretty much all over. So <laughs> if I have decisions to make here, I have to make sure they're clear. So when I ink, they don't get lost or messed up. I think I'm going to come back to these little feet because I don't really love the way this came out. Or you know what? I'll just phone this one in. That's okay. I'm just going to do a little regular feet. I wanted to do decorative, but 
That's okay. I'm gonna put cats on the wall. I think that's a good, um, that's a really good uh, idea for the artwork. So I think I'm gonna do, oh my gosh. I, w I wish I could share this. It was a, uh, I was on Twitter this morning and I found something that I was gonna send to you, Louise. Um, it was a cat dressed up like in um, just Christmas lights at like a tree and they had a little star on his head and it said, um, you became the thing that you were trying to destroy because cats are always trying to take down people's Christmas trees. I thought it was pretty funny. I don't have a cat, but that's what I know of cats. So I think we can do, well, we might not be able to get the whole cat, but just get a butt in there. Just get a cat butt. There's some cat faces.
All right, I think it's time to start inking. At least I can get the big stuff, and then if I want to add more detail later, I can always just, like, go in. Um, I think I'm going to take a quick break and pee, because I've been drinking tea. Um, take a quick two minute, and then I'll be back, and I'm going to start inking. So, thank you guys for tuning in, whoever's here, and thank you for participating in the chat. Um, yeah, I'm going to take a, a two minute pee break, and, um, or a one minute pee break, and um, I'll be back. <laughs> Am I good? Oh, okay. All right, we're back. <laughs> um, okay, so I gotta make sure my hands are dry because this is my favorite part, but um, it is <laughs> the most nerve wracking probably because once it goes down, it's down. Um, and I have the confidence to put down a clean line, but um, it's more a matter of like, Sometimes I'm so excited to do this part that, like, I stay up a little bit too late or I don't stretch or I I should have, like, taken a little bit of time to, like, center myself <laughs> before doing this. Because if I go in without thinking hard enough, um, I'll smudge or do something stupid that I regret. Um, so it's just, like, it's good to take a minute before you start this process and just collect, collect yourself. Um, so I have here um, Sumi Ink 60. I just got a new one of these um, off of Jet Pens and it's a permanent, uh, I shouldn't say permanent, it's waterproof um, and it's like extra dark. Um, this is just like a normal, normal one, I guess. Um, this is like the baseline that they have for this brand. Um, and it's water resistant, I believe. Um, it is not waterproof, I think, yeah. Um, and then I have my Winsor Newton Series 7 Sable Brush, my pride and joy of my art collection. <laughs> uh, I got some brush cleaner, I think it's General's, oh, the Master's brush cleaner. 
um, especially for brushes like these. And I'm a little bit nervous. Um, I might not use this brush when I get that new waterproof ink because this is a really nice brush and I'm a little bit concerned about using waterproof ink with it because... I don't want it to get stuck like in this bit up here where it's like, you can kind of see it. I don't know if you can, but there's like a tiny little black piece right there that I can't get off. Um, so I just have to be mindful of like dipping my brush in far enough into the ink um, and just like keep wetting it and cleaning it and everything or else it gets like kind of crusty and then it'll kind of make these splay out over time. Um, so I don't know if I'll use the waterproof ink with this, but for now, this is not waterproof ink, so I'm feeling okay using this, but at the end, I'm going to use this to clean it. Um, I have this Deleter Black ink that I might just get a little piece of paper and test it really quick because I got this a while ago, and um, I haven't used it yet, so I feel like I shouldn't use it now because <laughs> I haven't tried it yet, but I just want to see what it looks like. Oh, and that happens too. It's not terrible. I think I'm going to stick with what I know, though. And just do um, the Sumi ink over here. I hate that, too. That was This was in one of the reviews where this like particular brand, um, the ink gets stuck underneath the... Um, what do you call those? The threads of the cap and it gets like everywhere when you open it. So can confirm that does happen. Um, but this Sumi ink, I've never had an issue with that. So I haven't, it's not a super, there's a lot of threads in the cap, so it's not so bad. It's pretty clean. Alrighty. So oh, I need one more thing. So also important with this type of inking with the red pencil, um, it's really easy to um, erase your lines with a kneaded eraser with the um, red pencil. Um, so I always like to have one of these on hand as I go so I can kind of, just in case I need to clean anything up as I go um, to see it better. Um, all right, so here we go. Oh, and I have a piece of, um, paper towel <laughs> and my thing of water for cleaning the brush. Um, if I have to make a decision and I need to like step back for a second, I'll clean my brush in between so the ink doesn't cake onto it. All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm really hoping I don't just like totally spill or like smudge all over this and just ruin this entire stream. But if it's like little smudges, I can clean it up in Photoshop. But I'm gonna, I like to start with the left hand side because I'm moving to the right um, and I think I'm gonna start with actually a smart person would start with the case lines because that's a pretty substantial piece of the composition and I'm gonna do it I'm gonna use a ruler because Nobody's perfect. <laughs> oh, pretty dead on though. <laughs> Look if it take a little bit. All right, so um, I have a Tombow uh, Fudo Suke, Fudenosuke brush. Uh, it's not really a brush. It's kind of like a plastic tip. Um, but these are really fun um, inking tools. Um, this one's Kodatake, and it's kind of the same thing. It's like a plastic tip. Um, but I really like both of these. They're kind of like um, have the give of a brush pen, but they're still pretty stiff. I'm going to show you here. So you can get kind of like a nice variation in line. Um, I just like them because they feel really nice. I feel that the microns are a little bit too, like, I don't know, too stiff. Like these have a little bit more character to them. I'm using a clear ruler so I can kind of see the line that I made before.
ta-da. And then I'm even gonna go up here and do this guy. Just so I know on the edges where I'm going. And then I'll finish that up later once I finish the plates of goodies. All right. The rest I'm gonna try to do freehand because um, I don't want it to look too clean. <laughs> I want it to look too rulered. Um, when I'm drawing, uh, or when I'm inking, I usually like to have, like, some sticky notes around to just throw on places that I've done, or even just to, like, stop myself from smudging the pencils too much, because while I'm noodling around in here, um, the pencils can kind of, like, get lost. So I'm about to ink these donuts and this girl at the cash register right here, so, um, I don't want to lose too much of what I've put down in pencil and, um smudge what I've already done in my inks. So I just usually put some sticky notes down so I can just like save myself the heartache. So I feel like I went in a little bit too dark, um, too heavy handed with those just because typical rule of thumb with inking and comics, um, things in the foreground have like a heavier line to them. Um, so they stand out more and things in the background, um, have lighter lines to them. So I think I went a little bit too hard there, but I'm sure you won't be able to notice when, um, this is said and done. Cinnamon rolls are really good right now. <laughs>
Oh, I already smudged. <laughs> it's okay, it's what Photoshop is for. My biggest issue with inking is when my hands get sweaty. <laughs> it's kind of why the post-it notes are great too, because see, it sticks to my page and it's no fun. I usually go into the faces later when I'm a little bit more warmed up because I'm very prone to mistakes when I first start. <laughs> and faces I feel like matter the most.
Tiger's hot. <laughs> Can you tell those are gummy bears? <laughs> Marlena will know. Oops. I smudged. That's okay. I guess that um, I used the Kiritake for the lines um, to start out with. And uh, those don't dry very quickly. So noted for next time. I usually use them in my sketchbook, so I don't really care if it's messy. Um, but this definitely smudged. We always did that on our um, gingerbread houses. We iced icicles. <laughs> so you like pull the piping bag down when you um, are icing and it makes like little icicles. So. 
that I've had though. This like garland thing. Um, I watched Christine McConnell do. What is that called? It was the one of those like spooky hotels out in California, and she made a gingerbread version of it. <laughs> I'm a big fan of hers. I think she's great. But um, yeah, she like did this like crazy piping technique where the frosting had to be just the right consistency to do like make like ropes. It was pretty crazy. Come back to those. Oops, it was supposed to overlap, but oh well. That's what's kind of hard about inking like this is like, not everything that you did in your sketch is like super easy to see. So you just like really zero in on this one little spot and then you kind of forget to look at the bigger picture. So it's good advice to just kind of like zoom out every once in a while and like get a feel for what you're doing. Be like, oh yeah, that's where I'm supposed to be going next. I forget to do that sometimes.
Wow, okay, I didn't realize it was 9 o'clock already. <laughs> um, so I might pick this up in the next stream. Um, we want to try to do these two times a week um, where we just kind of like get together and draw. <laughs> um, so I might pick this up, um, I think Thursday is our next stream. So um, you guys can tune in and see the finished piece of ink. Um, is that okay for everybody? <laughs> I feel bad if people are like into this. If people want me to keep going, I can keep going. I just, I feel like I've, I don't want to make everyone bored. <laughs> I think my cameraman's getting tired. <laughs> so I might just have to wrap it up for his sake. Just cleaning my brush with this stuff. Probably should be cleaning it right over the piece of artwork, but <laughs> but um, thank you guys for tuning in. Whoever showed up, thank you um, for participating in the chat. Um, I'll get to the Instagram questions next time. Um, this is the first one, so it was like working out kinks and figuring out like how this was gonna work. So thank you for participating in our first one and bearing with us through. We didn't really have technical difficulties because Alex is a wizard. <laughs> But um, yeah, so thank you guys for tuning in. And um, if you want to come back Thursday and see the finished piece, that would be awesome. But we'll see you then. <laughs> All right, I think, I think that was my closing remarks and my sign off. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do now. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep cleaning this brush because it's still dirty. What's the... Um, consensus over there. <laughs>